Hello, I'm Gary Newman, and welcome to Gary Newman's Cars. Today we're at Brands Hatch, and hopefully, after some expert tuition, they're going to let me loose on the Caterham Fireblade. Brands Hatch, one of the finest racing circuits in the country. Once a home of the British Grand Prix, Brands Hatch has seen the rise of many champions, such as Nigel Mansell, who actually had his first championship win here in 1985. My guide for the day is Paul Harvey. It's Paul who developed the Cajun Fireblade and people have nothing but praise for his work. With Paul's experience, I mean, you ain't got, you ain't got a better person. Oh, don't really? don't right. Right. No, yeah. you don't embarrass him. He lies beautifully. <laughs> I mean, the fact is that he's developed, he's, he's developed the car now. You know, the one that we've, uh, that you've got mm -hmm. uh, with the Fireblade. Yeah. And now uh, the Lotus 7, that, what it, which it really is, oh, is now 50 years old. And Paul is probably the only person outside Colin Chapman that's done it over the 50 years. The development of the Caterham Fireblade I'm driving today is, in many respects, a continuation of the late Colin Chapman's work. It's lighter and quicker than ever before though. So, as I sign my life away, all that's left to do is to put our allocated number on the car and it will be ready for the track. That goes on the front and back of the car, oh, so they know what you've done, who's done it. And that's just to say we've we've been signed on. Okay. So simple as that, really. Right, this is a Caterham Fire Blade. Yeah, it's a Honda Honda Fire Blade, 900 cc's. Uh, you can see we sort of turned it around in the engine bay. Like in the bike, it would normally be sort of that way. Yeah. And uh, we've uh, where the chain would normally be here, going back to the back wheel yeah. there. We put on a prop shaft. And it runs down through to the rear axle that way. Is it the same? Is it a standard engine? Or did it is. Up or no, absolutely. Out, just out just of lift it straight up out straight of the bike. Out of the bike. It's, um, it's about 130 horsepower. So is it a liquid cooled engine? Yeah, it's a radiator on the front. Uh, there's a, a little oil cooler on it as well. Yeah. And the advantage of using the bike engine is, is what? The lack of weight. This engine only weighs 60 kilos, the whole lot. Yeah. As opposed to a probably ordinary car engine, a car gearbox would be 60 kilos, let alone the engine. So would the, would the car be built more lightly because of that? Or or yeah, we can structure the, the car just the we, same. We can then make because we lose so much weight. We can make all the engine mountings lighter. Things like the brakes, we don't need big brakes anymore. So it's something like 150 kilos lighter than perhaps that car there. So this is uh, a similar cage from there. All of a sudden, the brakes just don't need to be so big. It's just not stopping that mass. So I've got a car with little brakes. You have. Right. Tiny brakes. Right. <laughs> so what would this go out for? What, what would it cost? I mean, um, the really base price is about um, it's twelve thousand nine hundred pound base for the, kit. For the kit. Yeah. Uh, does that include the engine or the engine? Actually? No, the engine's about eight hundred pound. The idea is people can go and source their own engines. Eight hundred pound. Yeah. I mean, I know what all that engineering for sort of less than a thousand pounds. You get gearbox, engine, starter, alternator, carburetors, yeah. everything. It cost me a thousand pounds to get my car serviced. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So what, but also what you get with this is a sequential gearbox. Rather than an H gate, you get you push for down and pull for up. You don't even have to think what gear you're in. Just if you need a lower gear, you just push the lever. Is that the, is that the standard motorbike that, box that's like, in it? Yeah, it's like a motorcycle lever. My, you would, my, my bike is like one down and that's four it. up. But what we do, we, we move it into, just with rods, we move it on here, and that's all it is. So you push for down and pull for up. So it's all one direction, I feel. Yeah, you can't go across. One, two, three, move. four, yeah, five, back. That's right. Is it five, five yeah, speed? Six. Six, six speed. <laughs> The gear changes are very, once you can use them, are very quick as opposed to sort of going around an H gate. You've still got a clutch though. Yeah, just use the clutch as normal, but it's very, very light because you know, it's a motorcycle, it's normally on a hand lever. Is there anything that says that back for up? No. You've just got right to remember right. that, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whee! I, I, I'm, yes and no. I, I am into F1, but I just wish it was more exciting really. I'm sure it's exciting to be in and driving the cars but as a spectator sport it, it's lacking an awful lot and I don't think the constant talking about money and what the drivers earn does 
does any good. I, I find it almost offensive, really. Um, and I don't wish the drivers any any heart, you know, you know, good luck to them if they can go out and earn that sort of money. But the um, it, it does seem to change the nature of it compared to other motorsport. You, know, you look at TVR Tuscan racing, catering racing, and it's fantastic. You know, it's really close and it's and it's just great to watch. And some of the uh, the smaller tracks. I went to Snetterton a while back, and um, you can get right up to the track. You, you know, you can right in amongst it, and it's just fantastic. I went to watch Damon Hill's last race at Silverstone, and and you, you, you know. You just, you're so far away and, and the people that were really experienced had radios and little portable televisions with them so they could keep up with it. Watching it on ITV and, and watching the, every so many seconds, the car would go past over there and then they go back and watch it on television. And, and you pay like 100 quid for that. Okay. And I don't see it. I think if you're really interested in actually watching cars racing, um, the Formula One has probably the least to offer out of most of the major motor in events that you can go to. Um, great fan of um, the, the lower, the lower orders really. You know, even F Formula Ford and so on. Great to watch. You know, plenty going on. Legends, Tuscans, as I said, coach and so on. Great, great to watch. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I do love it. As Paul was talking to me about the gears and rev limiters, I suddenly thought about my big stumbling block, heel and toe. Now that this um, heel and toe business, um, I'm rubbish at that. Well, this car, you don't actually have to do that because there's no inertia, there's no, no big flywheel in here, no big engine, so there's no real need to start blipping throttles, heel and toe and all that. What you do, you tend to change your driving style a bit. So say you're coming to a down the straight to a sharp corner, perhaps you've got to change down three gears. Yeah. Instead of blipping the throttle, changing down beforehand, you brake, slow the car down, and just before you turn in, you just change down three gears, which, you know, is easy. So a quick change into my race suit, and I'm ready for track instructor John Vassell to take me around the track, just to show me the basics in the Peugeot before I'm let loose in the catering. Okay, so the conventional line here is to break it in a straight line to the top, then turn it, then start squeezing down on the power as the lock comes off. Come back down onto the corner. Yeah. Okay, this time we're going to go in on a long diagonal, slightly differently. Because it's getting wetter, then I can turn it, now I can have more power because my hands can unwind the steering faster. Yeah? So the wetter it gets, the more I'll modify that line. And there we go. That's a couple of laps around Brands Grand Prix. I do have hobbies, but they're not really for relaxing. I've got my my little jet boat, and that's not really really that relaxing because it's get up and going. Well, you can anchor up, I suppose, and and, and have a and have a laid back hour floating about. That's pretty cool. Um, so that a bit, I suppose. Um, the flying was never relaxing. I, it's not so much that you need to relax. It, you, you just need to get rid of anxiety from one thing and. and <laughs> move them into another as well. Now I would want to get away from songwriting or recording for a bit because it just can get on top of you. Um, constantly trying to come up with ideas and so on. Um, and being shut away in a little room on your own for long periods of time. But I wouldn't want to relax necessarily. I'd want to go out and do something which is just as demanding. Um, and a change is as good as a rest as they say. Uh, and I think that's true. Um, to move into other areas where you're also pushing yourself and having to work hard to, to get the best out of yourself. I, I was much more, I am much more interested in doing that sort of thing than simply just sitting on the beach for two weeks doing nothing. Um, although I can do that, but a, as a rule I'm not as interested in relaxing as I am in alternative pressure. time I've had my tutorial and now I'm just about to go out with Paul in this which I'm going to drive myself in a minute hopefully but just to, for my own peace of mind really because I'm a bit nervous and just to make sure that I know what I'm doing with this particular car because there's a lot more high performance than the one I was in 
So the differences between this and the one I was in are power to weight was in the middle. Power to weight ratio is vastly different, but given that, it handles so much better. It'll be very forgiving. So if you do get it slightly wrong into the corner, it won't be a problem. Turn in, it will go around. Yeah. Be confident in the car and it will just do it. Because it feels like it's going to be like a little hot rock rocket compared to what yeah, I was in, yeah. but the one I was in felt nice and comfortable yeah. and yeah, rolly and stuff. This, this again will feel comfortable because it's within the car. The car won't, it won't be skipping about, it won't be sliding, it'll be hopefully on really? rails. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So, but while, while we're going round, have a look at the, the track, yeah, but watch, have a look at the gear changing and these lights like we spoke about, yeah, and you'll be familiar with them then when you go to drive it, yeah. A bit worried about this. I think I'm in the heat at the moment. I'm just going to revert and start trying to change like an H box. With I think it. Uh, the thing is, don't don't get in the heat at the moment. Take it just nice and steady. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, just yeah. you know, and it is natural. And when you brake, you want to change down. You're being thrown forward. You just push the lever forward. Right. Dip the clutch. Push forward. Dip the clutch. Push forward. And it's natural. And as you're going, you're accelerating hard. And it's natural just to pull the lever. It, 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 Trust yeah. me. <laughs> it, uh, as a system, it sounds like it's much more natural. Yeah. But it's just unlearning what I've yeah. spent the last 25 yeah. years doing. That's exactly it. And you get away from a lot of these missed gears when you're looking for a gear. And I just did a know. lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is a lot more positive, and, and you'll very quickly give yourself a few laps to warm up to it and to get a feel for it. Don't get into any situations, and you'll get you'll feel that it's very easy to drive. Right. And then as you progress speed-wise, changing gear and driving the car becomes a secondary op operation. Right. So, it, you, honestly, you'll find it a pleasure. Here we go, out of pit lane. Warm the car up first. Sticking to the right, keeping out the way of the traffic. Looking at the mirrors. Just keeping over to the right. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear much of what Paul was saying when we were going around the track, which was a bit worrying. And out onto the Grand Prix circuit. It's a 1960 Lotus 7 and he's still hanging on to us. Going around the track with Paul was, well, just one word can describe it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was, um, I ran somebody over. I was coming out of work and I had one of these elevated car parks with a, a ramp that went down the side of the building and it had iced over. And uh, the man in front of me, who oh, I used to sit next to in the office actually, went down and um, lost control of the car. And, 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 and unfortunately, as it went down the building, it had a kink in it. It didn't just go straight down at the bottom. And as he went down, he lost control of it and hit the wall. Um, and then I thought he did quite a stupid thing. He stopped uh, and got out. And now I'm coming down behind him, and there's just nothing. It's just ice, um, and you know, all the brakes in the world isn't going to make a difference because by now it's just gravity. You know, it's nothing, nothing to do with, with slowing your car. And he's got up, he came up behind his car and went, <laughs> "What? <laughs> it's just happened to you, idiot! Yeah, what do you think I can do that's any different to what you've done?" So I hit him, and and he flew up in the air, and. And as he came down again, I got him again. I ran him, I ran him over twice. Then I hit his car. And luckily, he was underneath my car when I hit his, or he would have been between us. And I hit his car so hard that it just took off again. Um, but went off sideways and nearly hit a woman that stopped to see if he was all right the first time. Um, and then another car came down and hit me. And it ran him over again. And then my back wheels went over him and it broke both his legs and he was in hospital for ages, this mate. But I thought, I actually didn't have that much sympathy because I thought that was just stupid. You know, if I'd gone down in my car and totally lost control of it because of the conditions, not because I was driving badly, and now I'm stuck, I'm not going to stand between my kind of one coming behind me and put my arms out, you know, because it's not going to work, is it? Um, 
So what I did was, when the next guy came down and hit me, I then run up to the top of the ramp to stop any, anybody else coming down, which I thought was a probably more sensible way of going, of, going about it. Uh, I wasn't going to get in between anyone else and, it, and my car. But um, I, I did feel a bit sorry for him actually, because he was obviously in a bit of pain. After my few laps with Paul, it was my turn to drive. But I was so nervous about damaging his car, I insisted he came with me for my first trip. The power is incredible. As you push the throttle to the floor, the car surges forward in a howl of noise, pushing you back into the seat. The revs build so quickly that in what seems like a fraction of a second, it's time to change gear. To notice a race spec Ferrari or Porsche screaming up behind you is a bit daunting, but providing you keep your eyes open and stay out of the way, it's not really a problem. That's stunning. So it's like, it is easy to drive. You can feel it, can't you, through the car? It's like a piece yeah, of cake. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, uh, trust me, it's not Trust me. I know, it, I know what you mean up to a point, but you're, you're going about a thousand times faster than I was going. So. Yeah, I do know where I'm going, which does help. <laughs> well, <I'm even> so. <laughs> no, I shall, I shall plod around and take it all on board, I'm sure. Yeah. That was, that, honestly, that was just, that was outrageous, that. Finally, it was time to go out on my own. I was still a bit apprehensive. The last thing I wanted to do was to spin it into a wall or something even worse. Okay, well, this is it. I've been cleared solo in the caterham. Very nervous. Just very nervous, actually. You see how it goes. Getting into gear would help. I'd be lying if I said I was relaxed, but it's nowhere near as stressful and daunting as I thought it might be. The speed doesn't worry me at all, to be honest. I know I'm not a racing driver, so I drive as fast as I can, and I try to learn as I go from my own mistakes, hopefully not too big. What worries me most is the possibility of damaging somebody else's car and doing it on camera, of course, for the world to see. Just to be driving on a track as legendary as Brands Hatch was a pleasure in itself. To be driving in a car like the Cage and Fireblade, at times in amongst proper racing cars that were here to test, made it even more special. The gearbox in the Fireblade is sequential, like a motorbike. Almost immediately I lost the plot and had no idea what gear I was in. I just did it by feel, and I don't think I had too much of that. Some of the lines into certain corners do seem a bit odd at first, but they definitely work and you'll be an idiot to ignore the advice given by John and Paul. The engine noise is loud and exciting. Sitting in an open top car with all the sounds and smells pouring into you adds a level of enjoyment to the experience that is hard to describe. The steering is amazingly precise. The slightest movement in the car reacts. In a normal road car there is a tendency to lead into a corner slightly to allow for the play in the steering. Not in this. I love this car. I'm just an enthusiastic amateur driver, but it feels connected to me, or me to it, perhaps more accurately, in a way that lifts this driving experience to a completely different level. Ten years from now, it's really, it's really hard to answer. I, I, I love doing what I'm doing. I love my music career, um, but you know, in ten years' time, I'm going to be 53. You no, know, if that's if that still has a certain level of dignity to it, that you can do this and do it the way I do it, that's a problem. If I was Chris the Bird, God forbid, but if I was someone like that, where you just stand, you know, looking smart with your nice haircut, singing inoffensive songs to inoffensive people, then uh, 
you can keep on doing that to your 110, can't you? And, you know, it doesn't matter. But what I do, I've done it again. I'm going to get what I do is different to that. It's it's you, you couldn't be an old man and do it because it would just look silly. Uh, so I, I I either change and become a ballad singer, so I can keep doing it when I really don't want to do that. Or, or, or eventually I'm going to have to be honest with myself and just say, no, you just don't look the part anymore. You can't get away with this sort of thing. Um, whether that's going to happen in 10 years or not, I don't know. Hope not. Um, you know, people can fire all kinds of other bands at you, your Rolling Stones and Bowie and people like that that are obviously getting old now, but still do it. But whether it looks right or not, and whether that would suit me or not, I don't know. Of course, it'd be nice to have a choice in 10 years, wouldn't it? That'd be the best thing. For me to be in ten years' time, for me to be able to go out and do it if I wanted to, you know, to have an audience that wanted to wanted to see it. Uh, I don't know. I, all, all I do know is I don't want to be worrying. Done. That's about it for this week. Thank you very much. See you next week in Gary Newman's cars. You don't touch the brake or lift at all, so you, you just go on full speed all the time, just trying to control the size a little bit.